Hey everyone, um, sorry for delay on these tutorials. Try to keep up with them a little bit more. Uh, today we're going to work in uh, Rhino 7. Um, so some of the stuff is not available in Rhino 6. Um, and we're going to try out some of the new Grasshopper stuff. Uh, so let's get started. Um, we're going to work with some spheres and some sub D commands. And hopefully we get some cool kind of weave structure hopefully today. So I'm just going to type in sphere and I'm going to type in 15 for the first radius. Let's see here, right there. Second radius, if we just select and tap alt, we can copy and paste really quickly. Second radius, I'm just going to put maybe around four. Okay. And that smaller radius, we're going to rotate it. All right. Um, type in rotate we're going to change the a to degrees and I'll just type in 15 for now actually we'll do 35 okay I'm just going to copy and paste that rotate over we'll do it twice plug that one into here this one into here so they're kind of preceding themselves and let's just vary the actual rotation Maybe that one goes a little bit higher. And then what we're going to do is change the plane in which it's rotating. So for the first one, we'll do Y or XZ plane. The second one, do YZ plane. And we're doing that to create some geometry. So if we go to our lunchbox tools, which I already have open here, we go to Space Trust 2. And basically, we're going to do Surface B into the rotate. Uh, surface A into our larger sphere. That's going to start to create uh, kind of this 2D space or 3D space structure. Uh, for the U and the Vs, we're going to leave it relatively low. Uh, so I'm going to type in 5 for now, plug it both into the U and the V, and we'll see where that takes us. Now, if we go over to the surface tab in Grasshopper, there's a new tab here called Sub D just for Rhino 7. Um, a lot of cool different tools that hopefully we'll explore. Um, today we're going to use multi-pipe. Okay, and now if we were to plug in the curves, and some of them might not work just due to uh, reasons of like intersecting all the stuff. So if we hide everything that we have previously, we can start to see it's creating these really cool sub-D models just based on the lines like that so we get some really awesome geometry really quickly and the models are extremely clean so if we bake that out uh, let's see here click out of here so super clean model really cool feature um, so let's mess I don't want it to be too complicated right away there we go let's just play with three for now all right um, so let's go over some of these a little bit. So node size, um, that's basically like the, oop, that's basically like the radius. Um, so you can make it larger or a bit more smooth, or you can make it smaller. Um, we're going to keep it relatively large for today. And um, let's see here, our end offset. That's going to kind of help us smooth out. Uh, what's happening within the sub D model. So if we go super low to like one and bring our radius down, it's going to follow those curves rather harshly. So if we, with our node size down, you can start to see the curves are getting really matched up. Now, if we bring the end offset higher, it's going to start to misalign them. So basically kind of smoothing them a little bit. So you can kind of tell in the joints what's happening in there. All right. So for today, let's leave it at an eight. I'm going to bring our node size back up, something like that. I think that's going to turn out to look really sweet for the end result. Let's close out of here. Got some kind of goofiness happening in here. But I think it'll be all right. These parts are really sweet. All right. I'm mess with our rotation just a hair more on the, the smaller sphere. Public which plane. Kind of 
to just fix those areas. So let's bring these just a hair lower. Let's do this one a little bit higher. Bring that a little bit lower. Let's see here. I don't know. Let's bring that up, maybe. Now let's bake that out and see what the extra geometry is. What I'm looking for, if you guys don't already know, is just like weird overlaps that are a little bit too close together. Like this is kind of odd, but I don't think it'll matter. All in all, that's pretty much what I'm looking for. Like I said, the model's really nice. Like you're able to play with it really easily. Okay. So from here, um, what I want to do is we're going to just turn off our sub D. We're going to deconstruct that B rep. Uh, let's see here. Deconstruct the B rep so we get some faces. And we're going to play with that 2D truss thing a little bit more. And that's going to be our render geometry. So the, the actual sub D is just our, our, uh, our form that we're working with. So what I want to do is let's type in area. And we're going to move each one of those things outwards to get our two different surfaces that we have to play with for our uh, space truss. So we need the centroid, so that's the point. We're going to do a closest point to surface. Uh, that'll go into our centroid point, and then the S goes to surface, and we're going to evaluate that surface. And basically what this is doing, it's giving us a normal as a vector. Now, you could, you know, type in offset surface, but the actual surface geometry gets really, really crazy. Um, and so I want to leave this model relatively light, even though it's going to get heavy with some of the meshes we're going to work with in a bit. Okay, um, from here, I'm just going to type in point two five. Okay, and we'll just type in move. We're going to move those faces at the beginning of the deconstruct B rep with this vector of our normal. And if we were to bake that out, basically it'll look like this sub D model has some really nice seams in it. Okay. We might wanna play with, you know, how far it goes out or, you know, you know, as less as more in there, so. All right. And then from here, let's go back to our lunchbox commands. Um, let's do space truss again. So we'll do the B rep as our surface A, our move surface is surface B. That should start to give us some pretty crazy geometry. You know what we'll, maybe we'll do is, so we can see the inside of the truss a little bit better, we'll take the move geometry, let's type in area. So it kind of gives it almost like a chamfer edge and let's scale it. So our geometry is the moved, our centroid is there. Let's type in 0.988. Let's bring that a little bit over to maybe 0.8. And that'll be our surface B. All right, we're gonna hide all that stuff again. All right, and the next thing we're gonna use is pipe, but not rhino pipe, we're gonna use mesh pipe. And since these are a lot of lines, like if we even hover over here, it's 65,000 um, just for the first list of lines. We're going to fill out the, a few of these right away. So the end cap, we could probably leave it at zero so it's just open. That'll kind of reduce the amount of geometry. The segments we're going to just do is three, so it's only three sides. And then the radius, I'm going to just do 0.125 for now. And now we can plug in stuff. Always, I often get nervous with this many lines that we could crash our rhino really quickly. So, and it's already pretty much slowing down. Okay. We'll just wait. Okay. And to speed this all up, I'm going to join all these meshes together. We're going to hide this for now. That should speed up the model. Just a bit. We're going to flatten it so it's all one list. There we go. Let's bake that out, see what it looks like. There we go. Really cool. Let's 
really cool textures on there. And you start to get where the seams are starting to break up, that adds some extra layers. One thing I'm going to play with next is just that the actual node size. Might want to make it a little bit smaller so some of those holes start to appear. So if we go back, node size, let's just change that to, let's do 0.7. Give it some time. And to all those you guys uh, tagging me on your Instagram projects, appreciate that. Um, they're looking great. Glad to see these videos are being used. Thanks for all the nice comments on YouTube. We finally hit a little over a thousand subscribers. Um, let's keep that going. All right, this is looking cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, I think that's pretty much where I wanted it to be relatively quickly. I didn't think it would happen. Okay, well, I might just change one more thing and I think it's pretty much what I was envisioning. I'm gonna change the outside radius to a little bit bigger, 20. Wait for that to run. If it's too big, we'll just go back down to like 15 or 17. There we go. I am liking that. Opened up these just a bit more. Yeah, it's looking good. Let's rotate that around just a bit. We could have obviously done that in Grasshopper, but just for speed. I'm just going to scale this just a hair so it looks like it's kind of on legs. That's looking cool. Yeah, let's mess with the rotation again. Okay, let's do. Oh, let's see. Bump that up to 40, maybe. That's it. And I'm going to, I hate to go back on this. Let's try 10. Let's go below what we had. I think we got some weird parts happening, which is, it's all right. Um, if we mess with rotation just a bit, it'll correct itself out. There we go. We got lucky. Bake that out. That's looking cool too. Yeah. I'm definitely liking it, that's for sure. What if we bring the actual mesh pipes a little bit smaller? And do, oh, let's do 0.1. Bring this a little bit lower pipe. And the cube fit, that kind of works with the corners, and by default it's on one, or zero, so let's do one. That should kind of, you'll see it right here. Yeah, maybe not. I lied, folks. Okay. There we go. I think that's it. Get kind of a look on the inside. Yeah, it's looking cool. I like it. All right. So let's just get going with the rest of it. I'm going to do these kind of in threes as usual. 
Okay, I'm going to rotate it around so we get kind of different views of the model, even though it's the same. And come here. How's that looking? Looks pretty cool. Rotate this up. This is where manual manual modeling comes in handy. So that's looking cool. All their spots looking really sweet. That side's looking nice. So let's uh, rotate it this way. Oop, I didn't hit Alt. It's fine. This one's looking good as the the main piece. So I'm gonna rotate this. Bring it around like that. So it's kind of touching somewhat of a ground. I'm going to rotate this around. Basically, what I'm doing is just trying to get us set up for when we go to render. So these space objects kind of look ready to go. Okay, this one I'm just going to rotate this direction. And then we'll rotate it around like that. I think that's it. That's looking cool. Looks like that one's missing a little bit. Very cool. Awesome. All right. So what I'm going to do next, we're going to create a landscape. So just like usual, I'm going to bring these up to a little bit higher. And we're going to type in bounding box. That'll give us our ground plane. Okay. Have it exploded out. Take out there. Okay. Bring this lower so it's touching the ground. I don't know if I messed that up. Yeah, I did. Okay. Just bring that slightly lower. Okay. This one needs to be a little bit lower. I'm going to rotate it just a hair. Is that touching? Yep, that's touching. Great. So what's that looking like in render view real quick? Looking sweet. Okay. All right. Bring that plane, make it a little bit bigger. We're going to rebuild this surface. 125, 125. Great. We're going to go up to our select tab, hit the paintbrush tool as usual. Um, let's maybe just put some water around these edges. Okay, I'll have to deselect that mesh. Okay, I'm going to bring that just a hair lower. Okay, let's get some hills out in the distance. Okay, for it. Okay, we'll do the same over here. All right, deselect our surface. Bring those up. And let's smooth her out. That's a little bit too smooth, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Let's try it again. Smooth. Let's bring that down just a bit. That's not smooth enough. There's a fine line with smooth people. Okay. Let's bring that lower. Let's touch it. Maybe a little bit more. All right, that's cool. All right, this is going to be our grass layer. All right, we're going to make another plane. This will be our water layer. Bring it slightly lower. Bring it even lower there. Awesome. Water. And for these objects, we'll just put a basic material on there. Let's just do concrete for now. And we are all set for Lumion. All 
All right, so we have it imported into Lumion. Um, we're just gonna set up some materials really quick and we should be off and ready to render. So I'm just gonna mess with the water settings just a bit. Let's let it load. So this model actually took a little bit longer to load in to Lumion just due to uh, the number of meshes in there. Not crazy amounts of time, but um, definitely around 30 seconds or so. All right, that's looking all right. Uh, I'm getting too picky. Let's do that one. Okay, let's make this grass. I feel like I've been getting really lazy with my overall landscape jobs. Should work on that just a bit more. Turn down the curliness in here. Okay. And now for the the big material, which I'm not quite sure I know what I want it to be. Let's make that grass a little bit smaller. Okay, so I think the view is here. Okay. I'm not sure what these materials should be. So Try this one for now. Mm. I'm kind of liking that. It's kind of a dull. Yeah, we'll go with that for now. Is it okay? Like I said, the model's going to run pretty heavy just due to the number of meshes. Okay, so if we zoom out, it'll go faster. All right, so first things first, let's get a person in there. So get some scale. Like I said in the past, Lumion's uh, people models are they're decent, but the faces look so robotic. Um, obviously, it's it's tricky to make a person look relatively good, but they work. So, all right, let's get some landscape going. Uh, Lumion ten, you can start to paint out the actual trees and where they're at. So that's pretty cool. What a great update. Okay, so I'm just gonna go paint through here. And we should have worked with the scale guys because the trees look incredibly small. And they are actually relatively small. Let's get a taller tree. paint out the landscape just a bit. Self chat. We get uh, let's say we're done with that. Uh, let's get kind of a maybe a fallen tree in the foreground here. So the closer you get to the model, guys, it's going to get slow. Okay, let's get this tree here. I'm going to make it bigger. I haven't seen this look like it was maybe logged out years ago. Get a rock in there, maybe too. Since I got mountains in the background, big old rock wouldn't hurt. Mountains would be really big. Okay. I'm just going to drop that rock so it's almost like it's sitting in water. You might not even be able to see it, honestly, but we tried. Okay. Let's get some rocks. 
rocks in the foreground here. Drop those down too. Let's see what we got for rendering. Right, let's pick our view. I think something like that looks pretty good. The lady is incredibly small. Save that, let's that render out like, pretty cool. Shadow's a little bit off, we want to get the sunlight running in a different direction. So I'm just gonna click on the normal settings. This, yeah, let's do it daytime. Okay, real skies, I'm gonna turn off the real skies. We wanna be able to adjust our own sun. Sun height, bring that slightly lower. Is that rendering out like? Very cool. Looking good. Okay, we're gonna fix our camera because it's two point. There we go. Now they're looking heroic. All right, let's focus in so we get a full shot. What's our focal length at? 15. Let's bump it up. Or looks fine, I think. Get more into the image, a little bit more water. There we go. Zoom out just a hair. Bring the camera just a little bit lower. There we go. We'll save that. Very nice. All right. Let's do a little quick test run. I like it. I think we are set. Actually, let's go back. I know we didn't really play with the angle of that sun. There we go. Love it. Okay. Some clouds in there actually. Sky, let's do sky and clouds. Let's get some lower clouds kind of popping in. Not that many, not that many. Maybe a little bit. There we go. Let's get some high clouds. Our render preview. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and render this guy out. Uh, let's see here. Maybe 66. Yeah. Really liking this. First go, could add a couple more rocks into the scene, which I think we will. Just out in here, so this lady kind of has something to interact with. Unless it gets a little heavy to the left. Okay, let's go back to our build. Go back here, let's pop some rocks into here. Let's see, what other rocks do I have? Small rocks. I want that moss looking rock. Something to see like in Cornwall or something. Okay, this rock's really large at the moment, so we'll just scale it down. Put it kind of half in the water. Lower that. There we go. 
just maybe just put a couple oh just plants I guess maybe just around there nothing crazy I'm gonna drag the eye around the, the scene just a bit maybe up here too Just a quick note if you know if your model gets really really heavy like this um, if you join the meshes or take down the subdivisions in the grasshopper um, for less geometry definitely would speed it up just a hair but it's actually running better than i thought okay and i think this is all set there we go perfect all right let's just hit render and we shall see. I do believe it is. Yeah. So I think this is all ready to go to Photoshop. All right, so we are here in Photoshop, ready to go. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of highlight some areas. So we get some nice greens passing through. So it's kind of a, just highlight some spaces in there. I do like some of the, the nice shadows that are happening within here, so I don't wanna do it too much. Okay, just try to highlight the greens. Nice summer day. And like here in Chicago, it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and with wind chill, it's like negative 15 Fahrenheit, so it's freezing. There we go. Awesome. And of course, uh, vignette at the top and the bottom, so just hit B for our brush tool. We'll just take our mouse, roll past it, straight line, straight line, try to get it straight. Okay, that one wasn't the greatest, so I'm just going to hit Control T. So that's for free transform. Lower the opacity on that. Now let's take my eraser tool with E. I think there was a question on one of the past tutorials or on Instagram or something, but why do you render out them slightly darker? I do that just because if we do it lighter, sometimes the burn tool looks bad. So you know, if you render them out darker, you can always lighten them. That's why. I got asked that a lot when I was an intern too. Okay. And I believe this is ready to go. So thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, um, and definitely tag me in your posts if you make these. Um, love seeing everyone's work. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.